Okay, in this video, I'm going to be taking you through an example of how to determine simple interest. Okay, and this is a much simpler version of compound interest, and it's a great place to start when you're first looking at financial mathematics. So the first thing we need uh, is a formula. So we have the formula I, capital I for interest earned, is equal to P times I times N. Now you don't have to write those multiplication signs in between those algebraic terms. However, I'm doing it just for clarity's sake. Uh, but we better define what P, I, and N are so we are all on the same page when it comes to the substitution part. So I, capital I, is the interest the interest earned when you uh, have a certain amount of money at a certain interest rate over a certain number of periods. Um, so P, surprisingly and counterintuitively, is not the number of periods. P is your principal. Principal, not the boss of your school. Principal is the initial amount that you either have borrowed or that you are investing. Little i now. is your interest rate, okay? And last of all, we have the number of periods. Which is essentially, how often are you going to be determining this interest over what time period, basically? Now, this N is normally in years, normally. Okay, so now it's up to us to create a scenario so we can actually apply this formula up here and use our knowledge of simple interest. So let's say I, Mr. O'Donoghue, uh, don't have $30,000, but I want a $30,000 car. What I have to do is go to the bank and ask very politely, may I please borrow $30,000 and I promise I'll pay you back. And the bank will say, absolutely, we're happy to lend you $30,000 Mr. O'Donoghue, you're a very reputable person and we know you pay us back. However, because we're lending you money, money that we can't now use, you're going to have to give us a little bit extra when you pay it back. And I say, well, for the convenience of getting a car, uh, yeah, that seems like a fair deal. Okay, so the bank is going to lend me $30,000 and they say, we'll lend it to you for five years and we're going to charge you 10% interest per year. So 10% of that repayment per year. So we've got a bit of information now and I'm gonna have that information in text down in the description. So if you didn't follow there or can't remember all the information, just check down there. But essentially, essentially what we wanna do is construct our solution almost identical to this, but instead of the words interest earned, P equals principal, I equals interest rate, and N equals number of periods, what we wanna do is put in values and then calculate it. Okay, so the first thing when you're solving one of these problems is always write the formula. Okay, I'm going to write it without the multiplication symbols, but you can leave them in, it's absolutely up to you. So I'm going to write I equals P I N. A nice way to remember the formula if you don't have access to a formula sheet or the internet, say for example in a test, is that when you take money out of your bank account, you use your PIN number. Okay, so money is related to PINs, so I equals P I N. Now we want to say I equals, and I need to substitute values in for P, I, and N. But before I do it, just to make sure I'm going to get 100% right, I'm going to write those values uh, maybe in the middle here underneath myself. So in this example, P is going to be $30,000. That's how much I'm borrowing. And I'm also knowing that the interest rate is 10% uh, the bank said. And you'll notice I've written that as a decimal. A lot of people teach, and you might have learned in your own class, that the formula is maybe I equals PRT, that's a common formula, or maybe you've got I equals PIN, but in both cases you've divided the whole thing by 100 in the initial formula. That's because 
for you, if that's the case, your I or your R in the other formula uh, is just the whole number, 10 or 5%, whatever it is. Whereas in my uh, formula, and the way I teach my students, is we're going to write our interest rate as a decimal from the start, which has already been divided by 100. So if you see uh, your formula has a divide by 100, it just means that you're going to divide by 100 at the end, rather than divide your interest rate by 100 at the start. Okay, so we want it as a decimal, but this right here, this is our 10%. Oops, 10%. And lastly, the number of periods. In this case, it is years. We're borrowing the money for five years. Okay, so we have P, we have I, we have N, and now it's just a case of substituting them into my formula. So I have $30,000. In your substitution, you don't need to write the dollar sign, but in our solution, of course, we will. Times by my interest rate times by the number of years, five. So now I'm gonna grab my calculator and I urge you to do the same. And we're gonna pop in this equation into our calculator. So we're gonna have 30,000 times 0 0.10, you can just write 0 0.1 for brevity, times five. And we're gonna get $15,000. I equals the interest earned equals, oops, $15,000. That means when I pay back the car after those five years, I'm giving the bank the $30,000 that they initially gave me, plus, as a thank you, the $15,000 that has accrued in interest. Now, some questions just purely ask how much interest is earned or owed. That's this answer here. But be careful. Your question might say, how much in total do you need to pay the bank back? In that case, we need an extra little formula where we say A, which is the amount we're paying back, is equal to the principal, the initial amount we borrowed, that $30,000, plus the capital I, this interest amount, we substitute into that formula. $30,000 plus $15,000 is going to equal, now hopefully you can do this one without your calculator, but if not, grab that calculator. And I need my units at the front, $45,000 that I pay back for a $30,000 car. Now that's a very expensive difference. I paid 50% of the car's value in interest. However, it saved me from having to save up $30,000 and it meant I could use a car for that five year period. So there's pros and cons to borrowing money and I hope that you're aware of that, but in terms of just straight up calculating interest earned and then total amounts to pay back, hopefully this video helped you.